In this video, we are going to talk about how to troubleshoot DNet. Here are two examples of the DNet cards we will be talking about in this video. The main difference is that some cards have relays and others do not. With DNet, there are six communication channels for the double backer as well as six communication channels for each single facer MLC cabinet. Each channel string may have a number of cards connected in parallel. Your machine is probably laid out different, but we will just show this example for illustration. Each card has a communication jumper next to the communication plug. This jumper enables a communication terminating resistor on the card. Only the last card on each string should have the jumper on. If the jumper is not in the correct position, all cards on the string may not work correctly. This is an example of a DNet board. Here is the communication jumper, which we will be talking about in this video. This is a bi-colored LED, which indicates the status of the card's communication. Normally, the LED should be green, which indicates communication to the card is good. If the LED is red, off, or blinking, there is a communication problem. In this case, it is possible the jumper is in the wrong position. These two rotary switches are used to address the card. Some cards, such as this one, also have a jumper which enables the relays. Normally, this jumper should always be on. Removing the jumper prevents the relays from functioning. In order to tell which card is the last card on the string, you can just look at the teal communication cable connected to the card. If there are two cables, it is not the last card on the string. If there is one cable, it is the last card. Since this card has two cables connected, we need to remove the jumper. It may be easier to see the jumper if we unplug the cable. You can put the jumper back on one pin in case it is needed later. Once done, we plug the cable back in. This is how we're going to troubleshoot some of the uh, DNet errors that would occur on the field. Uh, this is for the CSSC 8 system. And uh, first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your PLC, everything in the cabinet, is powered off. So you want to hit the breakers, both of them. Make sure you have no power, no lights on. And uh, next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and locate your DNet channels. Should be six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, they're going to be colored. Uh, there's going to be uh, two twisted pair uh, wires for each uh, channel. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test out for a good channel. Uh, the good channel, you take your reading, you want to measure across uh, the white wire and the colored wire on each one. Uh, the reading you should get is about 60 ohms. Right there, uh, that's for a good uh, a good DNet channel uh, with the uh, with the resistor on the board on the DNet board uh, with a terminating resistor. You should get 60 ohms. This is what we want to see on the channel. On a bad channel, this one here, we get a reading of 40 ohms. We shouldn't see that. Uh, what we like again, what we should be seeing is 60 ohms with that terminating resistor at the end of the last uh, string on the DNet channel. And on an open channel with nothing hooked up, what we'll see is about 120 ohms. This is how we get to the DNet screen for troubleshooting. Press menu on the bottom of the screen, then press the icon that looks like an alarm to open the alarm screen. Press DNet on the bottom of the alarm screen, which will bring up the DNet status screen. What we see here is each of the six individual channels and what is actually connected on each string. The MLC number on the lower left corner indicates which machine we are looking at. Press the right or left arrow to change the MLC number. MLC 0 is a double backer, MLC 1 is a single facer 1, MLC 2 is single facer 2, and so on. Here we are looking at MLC 1. Channel 1 has two cards connected, CTC Override and Liner SAB cards. The value inside each box is the correct address for each card. The values in these boxes do not change. 
You can use this screen as a reference to verify the address switches on a card are set correctly. As you can see, we have an error on channel 2. That's the BSC remote. This is an indication that there may be a problem on channel 2. What we found was that one of the cards had the jumper set wrong. Occasionally, you may need to press the force read button to refresh the screen. So if you fix a problem, but the screen does not update, just press the force read. Now you can see we don't have any red alarms, so we are good.